Friends and Viewer Clarissa by Samuel Richardson This is a novel, a very famous novel like Tom Jones by Henry Fielding and Joseph Andrews. So like Pamela, Samuel Richardson written this story of a virtuous, beautiful young woman whose name was Clarissa, who is brought to tragedy by the wickedness of her world. The 18-year-old Clarissa Harlow is universally loved and admired, considered an exemplary woman by everyone around her. The Harlows are an up-and-coming family, possessing great wealth but little status. The other member of the family are avaricious and eager to improve their standing in the world. So what happened? The Clarissa became the victim of their greed. The troubles start when Richard Lovelace, a dashing libertine, comes to pay court to Clarissa's sister, Arabila, but is attracted by Clarissa instead. Arabila jealously combined with the resentment of their brother James, who holds a grudge against Loveless from college days and sets the family against him. A duel between the two in which Loveless wounds James but spares his life, crystallizes their hatred. The family become suspicious of Clarissa, forbids her for corresponding with Loveless and commands her to marry a horrible rich man named Roger Solmus. Clarissa refuses to consider marrying Solmus and carrying on a clandestine correspondent with Loveless. She also continues to secretly correspond with her best friend, Anna Owe. As she continues to resist marriage to Solmus, Clarissa is increasingly confined until she is barely able to leave her room. Finally, Loveless takes advantages of Clarissa's fear of forced marriage by tricking her into running away with him. Once Clarissa has run away, she is in a loveless power. Her repetition is ruined and her family refuses to forgive her. Loveless is an adept manipulator, enjoying the contrivances he invents to keep Clarissa in his web. He is in love with her, but he hates the idea of marriage, so his goal is to force her into cohabitation rather than marriage. Clarissa is innocent and virtuous and does not see through the loveless tricks. Furthermore, she refuses to compromise any of her strict tenets of behavior, even to save herself. Loveless repeatedly tests Clarissa's virtue as a means of testing the character of the entire sex. If Clarissa is truly an exemplary woman, she will withstand these controversies and remain a model of goodness. In his intention, however, is to force Clarissa to compromise her strict morals, sully her repetition and gain full control over her without suspend, suspecting that she is playing into his hand. She goes with him to London where he see where he secures lodging at Mrs. Uh, Sinclair's house. Clarissa is unaware that this is a brothel and the woman she meets, there are wars. Having been involved with and ruined by Lovelace in the past, these women are jealous of Clarissa and encourage Lovelace to rape her. At the same time, Clarissa's virtue has a powerful effect on Lovelace and sometimes swear sways him away from his bad intention. After several battles between his wicked heart and his protesting conscious, Lovelace's joy in intrigue, 
and wars, investigation, instigation, seal Clarissa's doom. Finally, suspecting Lovelace with wellness, Clarissa escape, but Lovelace finds her and tricks her back to Mrs. Sinclair's brothel. There, Mrs. Sinclair drugs Clarissa and Lovelace rapes her while she is unconscious. She awakes, Clarissa goes temporarily mad and Lovelace regret his action. He begins to talk with more seriousness about marrying her, but also thinks he will try to rape her again and see if he can get her consent. Thus, ab abandoning her principal, Clarissa, sensing this danger, runs away this time successfully. Once Clarissa has been raped, she stopped eating and no longer worries about worldly problem like repetition. She continues to seek reconciliation with her family, but they remain adamant. One of Lovelace's poor plots gone wrong allows him to accidentally discover Clarissa's location, but at the same time it damages her health and cements her conviction of his wickedness. Loveless friend Belfort becomes Clarissa's protector, keeping Loveless away but meditating between him and Clarissa. Loveless is now truly determined to marry Clarissa, but she refuses to the idea of death uh, to that of marrying such a criminal. Her healthy her health steeply worsens and she begins to prepare for death. With remarkably equanimity, Clarissa makes her will, appoints Belfort for her executor, puts her affair in order, even orders a coffin. She finally dies expressing forgiveness for everyone in her life and joyfully anticipation of heaven. The Harlows fi finally see how wrong their treatment of Clarissa has been. Mr. and Mrs. Harlow die soon after and James and Arabella marry badly and are miserable for the rest of their lives. Lovelace fails to reform and is killed by Clarissa's cousin Morden in a duel. Anna Hickman, Belford, and other good characters are rewarded with happy marriages. Belford takes on the project of collecting the letters that tells Clarissa's story so that it can be an example to protect other women from similar fates. So this is the story of Clarissa by Samuel Richardson. And this is a uh, very... This story is uh, a moral lesson for us. A woman, a, a, a poor lady who became the victim of her circumstances and uh, a victim of her surrounding. Richard, this story is uh, the immoral rake versus the innocent heroine. Richardson identifies the moral of his novel as the contradiction of the precept that reformed rape makes the best husband. This misconception, he says, leads young women to, pre to prefer libertines to sober, respectable men. The contrast between the dashing and wicked loveless and the boring but good thick men exemplify the ease with which the mis mistake can be made. Clarissa blames her pride in thinking she could reform Loveless for leading her into disaster. Her parents are also to blame as their autocratic measure push her right into Loveless' web. The implication is that parents need to shepherd their daughter away from danger because young girls are unlikely to escape it on their own way. This is the other the theme behind this is the individual versus society. Clarissa's great struggle is for the sense of autonomy in a society that prohibits women from wielding any power whatsoever. The Harlows intend to use their daughter to heighten their rank in the bourgeois community. By contrast, all Clarissa's desire is the right to personal happiness and her parents' consent. At the start of the novel, Clarissa inheritance 
present her with an opportunity for independence from both her family and future husband. However, Clarissa cares more about her family's acceptance than about property. So this, the reward and the, the story of reward and the punishment of evil. With the exception of Clarissa, every character in the novel is either rewarded or punished on earth. Good people get married, Anna Hickman, Bell, Belford, while bad people die in misery. Loveless and Mr. and Mrs. Harlow, Mrs. Sinclair, Belton, or suffer horrible marriages. James Arabila, Clarissa dies too, but her death is happy and she insists that it is actually a reward because it allows her to go to heaven, although their character do not have to wait for death to pro provide justice, their fates are delayed, so that any points it looks as though wise is rewarded while virtue is punished. So these are the themes of this uh, novel, uh, Clarissa by Samuel Richardson. And uh, this is a very beautiful, a very exemplary, very interesting, very thought-provoking novel. And it gives us a good lesson. I hope you will enjoy when you read this. Clarissa by Samuel Richardson.